So we basically would be looking into the um, you know workflow of this uh, um, test case, and the workflow is uh, a user is going to log in into this uh, application. So when he or she logs in uh, with the user ID and password, which I will be giving it to you. Um, so behind the scenes, when you successfully log into an application, it uh, generates, um, it creates what is called a session. So and the session. Um, will uh, be active um, as long as you are in the website and you move from one page to the other page um, uh, the session is going to be active and the way uh, the uh, website is going to recognize that you are um, the visitor uh, the active visitor is every time you go to a web page it's going to check the um, the session key and uh, try and compare and see that if the session key is uh, uh, the one which uh, it um, uh, gave it to you at the time of you logging in. So from page to page, um, you know, as you move, uh, it is going to check for that session key. And then uh, the the session key uh, basically uh, is checked uh, by um, the session key is going to be stored and sent across from one page to the other page in the HTTP header packet. So uh, when the HTTP header packet moves along, um, so this is uh, what uh, happens. The data is going to move from one page to the other page. Now, if you are inactive for, let's say, uh, n number of uh, minutes, and that n number of minutes is basically determined by the settings of your web server. So if you have uh, WebLogic, uh, Apache, Tomcat, JBoss, IIS, uh, there is a setting in there that will uh, determine uh, that uh, how long the session is going to be considered as active even though you as a user uh, are not performing anything on the website like I'm sitting here so how long will it be uh, that the uh, data in my uh, session key will be holding as active data and after the expiration of that or the timeout of that uh, uh, session timeout basically all the data which is pertaining to maintaining my session as an active session uh, will uh, get elapsed or dissolved or nullified so bottom line is uh, the everything depends on the settings of that web server now uh, that is the ultimate settings but uh, you can override that settings uh, in code you can uh, set the forcibly abandon a session meaning that uh, let's say um, if you find uh, a reason for for kicking out a user out of your site or whatever that is you can do that by forcibly abandoning his session um, now when you log out of an application uh, the abandon method of the session is called so basically that's another way of uh, abandoning a session so as long as the session is uh, up and running as long as the session is alive uh, you can move from one page to the other page and then as you move from one page to the other page uh, um, the data it is going to check will be stored in something called a session variables so um, let us uh, talk uh, a little bit about that the reason you need to know these things is because uh, of a topic called correlation right um, so what you mean by that is um, let's say you have you have you have a site and in this site uh, whatever this site is right some uh, let's say amazon.com right so you log into the you you come to the website now when you come to the website you are like an anonymous anonymous user right uh, or visitor when you are an anonymous visitor you have certain rights and certain privileges you can navigate you can go and then you can do certain things but uh, if you are a, if you are a logged in or if you are a, a visitor who uh, is logged into the system then you have some extra privileges so uh, basically what happens is uh, when you let's say when you log in here when you click on 
login and it takes you it takes you to another page uh, you enter your username you enter your password and then you log in so by entering your username and your password and logging in basically behind the scenes what happens is it goes through a process called authentication authentication and uh, authorization so what is this authentication and authorization it is going to take your username whatever your username is some of the businesses they implement the username and password as your phone number and your whatever the password is some would take the username as a, um, a specific username which is going to be uh, you know whatever username you will select as some will uh, use this as an email so whatever the case is basically the idea here is it is going to take the username and password and go through the authentication process what is authentication uh, when you create when you originally create uh, when you become a member when you uh, create an account with amazon.com what happens is it's like a new account in the new account you will enter your username your username and your password and you verify password and then you enter some other details like uh, uh, security questions and answer what is your pet name and what is your um, mother's maiden name uh, where were you born where did you meet your uh, you know partner for the first, whatever right so the idea behind it is you are generating you're generating a user now that user information is going to be uh, saved into into a table and uh, more access to that table would be given down the road if you need to update uh, your profile you uh, you can come in there and then update your profile you can change your password you can ch change your whatever uh, information so that's the membership information so now uh, when you want to log in when you enter your username and password the code will will take you into that table and check if the, your username is the same as what has been entered here if the password is the same as that if that matches then it comes back as a success so it gives you uh, what is called a session key right so that session that session uh, every session will have a variable so this can be uh, auth variable and this is set to uh, let's say true it can be it can be a boolean meaning that it is set to a true or false or it can be some uh, long uh, um, you know many character uh, you know many uh, I mean, whatever be the size of that it's a long long um, set of data which is being populated into this variable now the fact that this is created as a session variable is because when you go from one page to the other page whenever you uh, navigate from one page to the other page the way things work is when you go because this is all stateless this is all stateless it is not going to be like in case of a client server system that you can store the data into a global variable and then you can you can share the data from a global variable what you have to do is you have to create what is called a session variable and that session variable uh, piggybacks your request so whenever you make a request uh, from this page after you log on you made you make a request you are searching for you're searching for some music album and then you when you find it when you click on that so along with the request to go to that page also goes some information that comes from from this session so the way the session variables they go from one page to the other page is they reside they reside into what is called the header header packet so header package they reside in the header package because these are the the uh, session variables now sometimes what happens is uh, all these session variables when you're passing they by default uh, they can they will pass as a as a part of the header packet sometimes you need to pass data from one page to the other page when you're passing the data from one page to the other page basically uh, you could do that by creating what is called session variables which go inside the header packet or you can you can append you can append uh, the data to the URL of the of the uh, page so if you are going to append